You're watching the station that works for you. ABC2 Baltimore. One of the biggest stories of the week, if not of the month. Take a look at this picture. This is the accused Morgan State killer cannibal, Alexander Cunha, called by his ROT instructor, Virginia Tech, waiting to happen. He was known to have serious anger issues, accused of a brutal attack. Two days before his roommate was murdered and cannibalized, somehow he made bail for this attack. Reaction to this sickening and alarming story this morning, Bob Scher. The baseball bat assault could not have been prevented. However, the grotesque murder could have been. Ken Ravenel. What I am happy about is that his father and his brother realized something had happened and came forward. Trey Lewis. Prior to the attacks, he was explaining to the world that he was troubled. He did it on Facebook. He talked to friends about it. No one did anything, and now a man was killed. And welcoming to the panel, Susan Green. I think when Morgan State was told by the ROTC instructor that this was a Virginia Tech waiting to happen, that's a pretty strong statement. All right, good morning. It's good to have you on the panel. Thank you. Welcome to Square Off, everyone. It's Sunday morning. I'm Richard Scher, brought to you by the law offices of Peter Angelos. And if you have a serious legal problem, then you need serious legal representation. We urge you to call the law offices of Peter Angelos at 1-800-556-5522. 1-800-556-5522. You'll be very glad you did. All right. Of all the shocking things that human beings can do to each other, nothing quite alarms, terrifies, disgusts, and intrigues us like cannibalism. Remember Anthony Hopkins as Hannibal Lecter in The Silence of the Lambs, the cannibal's obsession with Clarice. And today, Morgan State University student Alexander Cunha behind bars accused of murdering his roommate, Cujo Bonsafo Cody, in the most violent of ways. The specifics now from Hartford County Sheriff Jesse Bain. The suspect, Alexander Canua, was then inter interviewed by detectives, and he admitted to killing our missing person, Mr. Cody, and cutting him up with a knife. He further stated that he consumed Mr. Cody's internal organs specifically his heart and portions of his brain. And this story has shocked everyone, and there are other stories like it in the past couple of weeks. Bob, take off. Well, obviously, the mistake made was that this man was allowed out on bail. We'll start with that, okay, because that's after the assault. Now, I don't blame the judge. Uh, it was Judge Jamie Houston, who is an excellent judge, and I, I've tried cases in front of her, and I know her. I don't blame her for this. What I, who I blame is the prosecutor, because the, the facts that were presented uh, to the judge... About the beating? About the beating left out a whole lot of things. Number one, it didn't say anything about Virginia Tech waiting to happen. It didn't say what happened at Morgan State. All it said was there was a prior... Did the prosecutor know all this, Bob? Yeah. I mean, did the prosecutor know. know that the ROTC instructor had said he's a Virginia Tech waiting to happen? You can't blame the prosecutor without blame. knowing all of the facts. All Look, right. I, don't, I am not one to always defend prosecutors. You all know that. But facts. you cannot, the without knowing the facts, know. you cannot, without knowing the facts, blame the prosecutor. Two facts that the prosecutor had to know. Number one, that that bat had chains on it. That was Bob not... Bob Weyer, and he blinded it was not the presented. No, number, no, two, no... number two, they made it look like that this was uh, a targeted one-shot incident. Bob, the bail was $220,000. It right. wasn't though they set a bail that was, you know, $10,000. Right, so that is a significant bail. The Susan. But the prosecutors asked for a bail, correct? I, well, I, I agree with Bob. I think that really uh, it's outrageous that somebody like this could be put on the streets. This, the individual who was assaulted sustained serious and permanent damages, really serious damages. And when you have an assault of this nature where someone is that violently injured, they really shouldn't have been out on the, the street. The problem is, is that we, we can focus on one aspect, but we, we should look at it all. This man was posting things of this nature on Facebook, on an open meeting when everyone can see no one did anything. We talk about the prosecution on the first assault that he made on someone that nearly killed him and blinded him. We talk about what ROTC did. We talk about Morgan State, what they didn't do. This is a continuing thing that happens more and more is that we see where entities sort of, you know, overlook things and try to, you know, pacify it as opposed to just nip it in the bud. Trey, but, here's the but, problem. Everything you say is right, but irrelevant. The, the, because... If everybody could have known about the Virginia Tech waiting to happen and all that. It all boils down to the guy went before a judge. If bail is denied, he doesn't commit this murder. If bail is granted, he does. That's what but you're again, talking about. But again, what information that was known. One of the things that people tend to do 
is be Monday morning quarterbacks and blame the judge, blame the I'm prosecutors. Not the judge. But but I'm saying you're blaming the prosecutors. I am. Here. I am. But you don't know what they knew. You don't know what information they had. Look, you know what happens at a bail review? Person gets arrested Monday night. They have a bail review Tuesday morning. The prosecutors have a limited period of time to learn about that particular person. So until we know what was presented to the judge, we should not well, criticize even know, the prosecutor. I do know that there and was a police there. report, but this is what I've heard, what's okay. been reported. A police report indicates that this was a bat with chains and barbed wire on it. That's in the police report. Well, I would think the judge at least, should have known that. No. Well, the well, prosecutor didn't give those That facts. is not accurate. Look, oh, I've done many of bear reviews. What? If it's in the police report, the judge has the police report. And why didn't Morgan State take some action when the ROTC instructor said this is a Virginia Tech waiting to have Happen. They didn't say that this, is, this guy has social adjustment disorder. They said this guy is a danger. But that wouldn't, Susan, now it's true, but it wouldn't have prevented this. Who knows oh, what would have prevented say, it? Would have it? He, let's suppose he'd been kicked out, as he should have been, all right, with, the, with Virginia Tech waiting to happen. Should have been kicked out. That doesn't mean he can't be in that apartment, dorm, or wherever it was with those ROTC students, whether he was kicked out or not, and assault that guy. But if he'd been kicked out, then he'd been reported to the proper authorities. They could have done an evaluation. They could have seen if he the had biggest, a mental the illness. The biggest problem is, is that when people display things of this nature and they're going to do this and they want to do this, is that what do we do? What do we legally can do about it to intervene and stop it? We can't say just because a person's nuts so we're going to kick them out of school. We can't say that oh, you're going to kick them out of his apartment. You but can't. You, you, you can't kick them out of school. school. He was uh, 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 They need right. procedural safety. Order in the court and he was blinded in one of his eyes from that injury. Everybody knew that. Up next, why is Senator Mikulski fuming on this Sunday morning? Welcome to Squirrel. But legally, as your attorney. Look. No reason. I'm sorry, for look, Jamie. And I, love, I love Jamie. I love, I love I'm Jamie. Sorry. All right, we are now talking. Back yeah. out on the air, I'm sure she'll appreciate that. All right. We do want to hear from you. Too, we are totally interactive. As you know, you can tweet us at Square Off Rich. You can write us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Square Off Rich. Maryland Senator Barbara Mikulski calls the 52 to 47 Senate vote opposing moving forward with uh, Equal Fairness Act, a debate on equal pay for women, a sad day that the Senate refused. She says it's a sad day when paycheck day comes and women continue to make less than men. Women making 77 cents for every dollar men earn now. It was up from 59 cents in 1963. Susan, you're the, apparently the only woman on the panel today. So what do you think apparently? about this? Apparently I am. I am the only woman on the panel. What do you think about this? Well, I think, first of all, you know, everybody's going to say that it's a Democratic ploy and that it's just meant to garner the women's, the, uh, women's vote. I don't have, I don't have now. There may be some truth to that. However, having said that, you cannot deny that there's gender bias and that there's unequal inequality in pay in 2012. Look, I have the leading case on gender bias in the Maryland courts and made, the, it was American Trial Lawyer Association's trial of the year, I mean, report of the year. And the bottom line is, gender bias exists in 2012. You now can't ignore it. tell me she's wrong. No Say that she's no wrong. She's wrong. One at a okay, time. Tell me why she's wrong, Bob. Right. And I, you know, actually, let me tell you this, Bob. I'm never wrong. <laughs> they are, the Republicans are, again, disrespecting women. So I don't care what you say about it. What does that mean? You're wrong. Let, that me, mean? let me explain let why. Let Kenny finish, then you guys 77 are 77 cents to a dollar. Mm -hmm. They have a chance to try to make it better. They have a chance to give women the a right to fight and to go to court if they're treated unequally. What do they say? Not, no, no, let me happen. tell you. It's not going to happen not under this right yeah. let, let, me, let, no, me tell you, let me tell you how phony this bill is. Please. All right. Number one, him. number one, women have the right, if they're being discriminated, to go to court on bias right now. Okay? What this bill does is, first of all, it switches the burden of proof to the employer to justify every single difference in pay. Puts the burden on them with punitive damages. So what will happen is employers will now settle these cases to buy it off. So it's a, on cases, wait a minute, let me finish, on cases that they shouldn't be settling. That's number one. Number two, the, you're wrong on the 77 cents thing. What that does not, or you're wrong, what that does not take into consideration, it is not matching apples with apples. It is not, there is no discrimination in pay for the same job for a man and a woman. Hold it, Bob, stop it. Go ahead. 
First of all, where is that data? Do you have a report that cites yeah, that Yeah, the Labor Department did a report on that a couple years ago, and the Labor Department found that the reason that there is, there is a 77 to a dollar, but that's not on jobs like jobs. Exactly. That's based on women making certain choices in their lives to work part-time to raise okay. a family Barbara and McCulsky, things of that Barbara nature. Right, right. Barbara Mikulski and the Democrats are very disingenuous with this bill because, like he just stated, it's not talking about job for job. And most importantly, I find it odd that if the federal government wants to introduce a bill this nature, why are you excluding the federal government for equal pay? Well, let me just ask you a question. Do you deny that there's that there's inequality in pay? Yes. Okay. Yes. If you if there's a, a large corporation, mm -hmm. okay, that is engaging in discriminatory practice mm -hmm. of singling out women and they're making less money, do you have a problem with there being litigation? No, and there's laws on the books there's for that, as you just pointed out. You have a case like that. You don't let, need let, 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 to let switch the burden right. of proof. I, I, I've sat quietly for one. Let, let me tell you this. All right, now let Ken make Come his November, point, both of you. you will see women vote. And what I will guarantee you from what I've seen, the statistics is that women will vote, majority will vote, for President Obama yeah. versus Obama. You You're know why? right. That's why. You know why? You know why? You know why? You know why? Because of phony you know, of phony. You, know, you know what that suggests? That women are ignorant and not able to see that this is phony according to you. I don't think you really want to say that, Bob, because you're telling me that this phony, phony bill that women are going to be fooled by it. Mm -hmm. See, that's they the will. kind of thing that gets us in trouble. Let me, let me tell you something. No, no, first we find that they're somehow oh. not equal. Then we find that they're all stupid. Right. They can't see the difference. First of all, Guess we, what? Let, I believe that they're very intelligent women, okay. just as intelligent as men, and that if this was phony, they would see it. So when they vote for the president, they're going to vote right, because Bob, they believe it's in their right, best quiet, The phoniness starts with the title of the bill. The Paycheck Fairness Act, all right? So 75% of the public uh, can say, you know, the Democrat can say, this Republican voted for against the Paycheck Fairness Act. And people will go, oh, my God, and they won't even know what the bill says. Well, again, you're the suggesting that phony. women can't see through the title Guess what? of a bill. Maybe they you're will. You're suggesting that. Maybe well, they then, will. Then why did you just agree with me that? Majority will probably vote for the president. I, I, you said they're going to be fooled. I think women, they will not be I think fooled. Women already, they know the well, title. Think women, already, shush, women already see through it. First of all, there's entities out there. There's litigation. There's the courts. There's EEOC. There's factions out there to protect women and, and unfair and equal treatment in the workforce. And again, back to my original issue. If the federal government is so pious on this issue, why are they excluding their own payrolls from this, this bill? Women may see it, but we also see that women are seeing that they're not being paid the same as men for the same jobs. Yes, they are. They are they not. They are. Yes, they are. They are. And if they aren't, job for job, they the are. Job right for job, now. they are. We're not talking about you know where a, a low entry job is not making the same as someone who is a mid mid, uh, mid level management. We're talking about job for job across this country on, in the private sector, which is which we're really talking about here. In the private sector, there is equal pay because if there isn't, then there is litigation, there's EEOC, and there's factions out there to protect women. But you know something? You know what the economy is like. You know how hard it is to get it has a job. To do with the no, it does have. Either. It has everything right. to do with it because if you're a woman and you're employed, okay, it's it's very difficult to bring one of those cases. And not, and not everybody has access to the courts, and they have fears. They're, you know, some of them are head or household, and they could lose their jobs. Susan, so it's not what, as easy as happen. you suggest. Here are the consequences that would happen. We are trying in this government now, this economy, to create jobs. This is a job creation killer. If this law would have passed, employers facing the possibility of having the burden of proof shift on them and have to pay punitive damages won't hire anybody. Bob, you know what? We'll You're not create wrong, jobs. I'll be happy to continue to address this. All right, we'll when continue to address this, Please. and we'll take a look at the red flags flying today over Wisconsin when we continue. Why is the federal government not excluded? That got on. That's okay. It's all right. All right. All right, a major political development out of Wisconsin this week. As Republican Governor Scott Walker was not recalled, beating back the labor unions and Democrats who tried to kick him out of office and replace him with Milwaukee's Democratic Mayor Tom Barrett. Here's the winner. Good evening. Tonight we tell Wisconsin, we tell our country, and we tell people all across the globe that voters really do want leaders who stand up and make the tough decisions. All right, so that's a big, big story. Republicans spent almost forty-six million on this. It means nothing. It means nothing. It means nothing because I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm sure it means important. nothing to Trey when it, when it says the Republicans did it's it. Private Democrats, money. it would be I, I just the opposite. I don't care about private money going to a campaign. Would, would the right. I don't care about private money going to a campaign. What I care about is that the taxpayers of Wisconsin had to spend eighteen million dollars on this recall election because someone got their feelings hurt. That's what I care about. Well, because see, if this was all, Trey, this was all Trey, about guess what? the little guy. Guess what? There was. It, there needed to be a number of people to ask for the recall. 
Right. And it wasn't just one person who had the feelings hurt. So that. you know, you misrepresent the entire fact the by down, saying that. The there was a finish. number of people who said the majority that we want a recall vote. That's how a democratic society worked. The fact that he was not recalled, that's fine. People voted. But guess what? What we have is that Walker beat Barrett. It doesn't mean anything about whether Romney beats Obama. Oh, it, I, when the exit polls said 51% Obama, 44% Romney. Cut stick. your comments by about 40%. Bob. Scott <laughs> Walker was guilty of, his, of doing what he promised to do in his campaign. He came in with an $8.5 billion deficit. He cut the deficit without layoffs, without raising taxes, lowering property taxes and and leaving Medicaid alone all right and managed to balance the budget and for that the Democrats want to punish him well the question becomes first of all I don't think that this particular incident is going to weigh in on the what happens nationally we're five months away from the election from the actual voting day and five months in election time is like dog years. it's no, like dog years. It it will. Be, it's here's, an here's eternity let her finish okay. it, it, it will it will here's the reason why obama wants to put his war chest at a billion dollars because he thinks he wants to outspend and out manipulate the republican candidate which is going to be mitt romney the fact of the matter is that the voters in wisconsin saw through all that and saw through the issues what the fact of the matter is they elected walker to do exactly what he did the people of the United States are going to go to the polls in November because they want to elect an executive who can run the economy the right way. That's what they're going to vote for. And I believe that Wisconsin is going to play exactly what, what's going to happen in November. I one part. First, I do agree that the Republicans made a conscious hard fight to keep Walker in. And they did the right thing. I think the voters did the right thing. There was nothing unethical about what Walker did. No. And what the voters said on the exit polls that about 60 percent, unless it was unethical, we aren't going to remove him. That's fine. But I don't think that this informs us what's going to happen. Well, with where it I plays agree. a part, where it plays a part is it's a perception. So the perception out there is that a Tea Party elected Republican governor that has taken on unions uh, is a viable candidate, and therefore. Be afraid, Romney may have a shot here. That's what it does. It gives perception out I there to the Romney Republicans. I understand, Romney is not going to be so foolish as to just say that he can take on unions across the country. Well, I didn't, I didn't say he wasn't. Do it. I didn't say he wasn't. What Plus, happened in this particular election happened in this particular recall. I'm telling you right it's now. It's perception. It's perception, and that's important. Right. I will not carry the day. I agree with Ken, but I also have to say it makes you wonder whether or not United, that the United States presidency is for sale. Because with all the money, with all the money raised... Um, this election, obviously, the out-of-state money that poured into this, ele this election was unbelievable. Was unbelievable. I don't and now, think it would have changed the results. Now Romney has, is out. Uh, he uh, is out. Um, yesterday, I think he raised more money than Obama. They're both going to raise a lot of it's money. It's a toss-up. They're yeah. both going to raise a lot. Of Who's going to win this election? Romney. Who's going to win this election, Ken? Obama by fifty-one. Yeah, about six points. You know why I think Romney's going to win it? Points. I'll tell you why. why. Because I have a hard time believing. And I know how good of a campaigner this, uh, Obama is. He's the greatest, I'm telling you. But I have a hard time believing, uh, as Walter Mondale learned in 1984, that you can't go out on, on the stump and say, if I'm elected, I'm going to raise taxes. I can't wait and expect everybody to go, yay! I just don't see it working. Well, you it's know what? Well, here's what I think is going to happen. People are going to look back and really have a real debate. I don't think that Romney or President Obama are going to be the idiots on TV, as you saw in the Republican debates. They're going to be real men talking. And when real men talk, people get a chance to listen and assess. The president, look, the economy hasn't come back when we wanted it, but it's coming back. I'm what sorry. he's done, well, Trey, you can say what you wish, because you know, Wall Street well, is up and down, but sure guess can, what? It, it's can, like that is market. the issue. That is, bottom line, are, do people feel that Romney can create jobs or Obama? Oh, that is it. Yeah. That's Trey, the answer. Right. Romney, question. you have to go with Romney. You have to go that the American people are saying they're going to see through the issues. They're going to see the, the, the three debates in the fall, which is great, which is great for Romney because Obama eventually is going to have to run on his record. He can't. There's no record to run on. You must have been watching something else for the last. We're hoping to have years. all three debates on Square Off, by the way. Nowhere, you know, nowhere else. <laughs> what do you think? I think it's too soon to tell. I really think that with five months left, I think a lot of things can happen. And I think it's a pretty close race, although I think Obama's got the edge. But I think, I think the, the people are, are upset. I think the economy and the joblessness rate, I think it's really going to factor into uh, what happens in November. But I, think when, I think when people realize you know, that when President Obama came into the office, what, almost four years ago now, the economy was sick. He didn't cause it to be sick. He has, in my opinion, done a very good job.
Has he solved all the problems? No. Are there many left to solve? Yes. Has he made Who's things right worse? Person? Yes. All Absolutely right. Not. We'll I be back. You, Give an example of where he made it better. All right, Ken, we're back for a reminder that we're brought to you by the law offices of Peter Angelos. If you have the symptoms of mesothelioma, you should call 1-800-556-5522 first thing in the morning. This is a serious situation. Call Peter Angelos first thing in the morning. Some of your feedback, tweets, Facebook, on the Equal Pay for Women, Kathy writes, It's disgusting when women are the primary breadwinners, earning less than men. The whole family suffers. Kevin L. says, the Senate vote is BS. I'm a recruiter, and I hire men and women, pay them the same. And Ed C. says, women have to fear other women in the business world more than they have to be perceived as perceived income disparities with men. Thanks to all of you. A reminder, a reminder that Jay Harris promotions right now, today, going on right now, the Doctors Express Summerfest going on at Sudbrook Lane between Reichstown and Old Court. Rides, food, all kinds of fun. Go out there. It's on now till 6. Next Sunday... A square off encore presentation. National motivational speaker Stedman Graham with his passport to your own identity. You asked for it again, we deliver. Stedman Graham next Sunday, 11 a.m. on Square Off. Have a great week. All right, everybody. So long. Nice to have you.